Hello everyone, this is uh, Lisa. You probably already know me, so we won't go through presentations. <laughs> Today is Tech Friday, so let's see what's going on. This is from the Washington Post. Uh, this article was written by Delvin Brown, so thank you Delvin for uh, jumping in and writing this article. Uh, I might have made some comments about this uh, wheelchair uh, before, but this is the whole plan for this wheelchair. Um, so the title of this uh, article is Startups Seek to Breathe New Life into Stagnant Wheelchair Industry. So um, it's showing here on the main page of this article a very sleek uh, manual wheelchair. It has no, um, <clears throat> it's not square at all, it's all curves. <clears throat> and it looks very soft. So I saw a video on uh, this wheelchair before, and its axle, the main axle underneath you, moves with you, moves back and forth. So that means that the, the, whether you're sitting back or forward, the wheels, the back wheels are with you always. So it, it is a very interesting uh, concept. Uh, it seems very smooth. It seems very easy to, to handle. So here's what the article says. For years, cars have gotten smarter and seemingly safer, and companies loaded them up with sensors, cameras, and connectivity. Scooters and bikes soon followed. But what about wheelchairs? So startups are vying to enhance the lives of those living with mobility challenges by adding artificial intelligence to wheelchairs. The thought is that computer vision and intelligent braking tools can make the devices safer and easier to operate. A few firms are gaining traction, so wheelchairs of the future may be able to do more than move people from one place to another. There are things that the industry has been able to do over the past 24 months to make wheelchairs better, said Bill Mixon, CEO of National Seating and Mobility, and that's the company that I work with for my power wheelchair. One of the nation's largest assistive technology firms. The fact that they're more connected will allow us to involve these devices to become receptors for information and data. So companies in the field have been slow to innovate, partially because Medicare, Medicaid, and most other insurers cover only basic equipment needs, and that's very true. The wheelchair manufacturing industry is also dominated by a few multinational organizations that have focused more on releasing products in new colors and sizes than bringing wheelchairs into the digital age, experts say. A few startups in the field want to disrupt that. This month, the assistive mobility company Lucy uh, announced a partnership with National Seating and Mobility to give power wheelchairs users across the country access to new high-tech safety gadget that attaches to chairs. Now, some of you might have heard of Lucy before. Uh, they have attached to power wheelchairs some sensors that prevent the the driver or the power wheelchair to bump into things, walls and, and other uh, obstacles. <laughs> so that's, that's Lucy. Uh, so they've made the contract with seating mobility uh, to give power wheelchair users across the country access to this technology. In December, Scottish inventor Andrew Lawrence of Phoenix Instinct won a million dollar mobility prize from Toyota to bring his company smart wheelchair concept to the market. So the two companies address users with different needs. Lucy's apparatus can be retrofitted onto existing electric wheelchairs for people with upper and lower mobility challenges. Phoenix Instinct focuses on reinventing manual wheelchairs which the user propels. The primary issue uh, both firms are seeking to solve is injuries caused by tip-over accidents. So I'm sure you've had some experiences, especially when you're new with manual wheelchairs, that 
if you get too close to the edge, you're going to go forward, and so is the wheelchair. If you uh, raise your wheels, your front casters to get over things, uh, sometimes we go too far and we can fall over. Most wheelchair-related injuries stem from tipping over, of course. As users redistribute uh, their weight, either going over a bump or reaching to grab an object, the chairs can fall backwards and cause significant injuries. In one study, over 87% of wheelchair users reported at least one tip over, one tip or fall in the past three years. Lucy's co-founder, Jared and Barry Dean, started the firm in 2017 after researching ways to improve life in a power wheelchair for Barry's daughter, Catherine. The result is a mountable smart frame that's hard to detect uh, once it's installed. So let me jump forward. Uh, the article is really, really interesting. I don't want to read it all. Um, I think that uh, it's a fun article to read, so I'm going to just jump down here to uh, the, the bottom. I'm going down to the bottom here. All right. The Phoenix One uses a leveling system that automatically adjusts its center of gravity, making it more stable and comfortable to maneuver. The company participated in a three-year competition backed by the Toyota Mobility Foundation and Global Innovation Foundation Nesta Challenges to enhance assistive te technologies. It won the competition in December and expects to receive the prize in March. Its prototype, a black round-edged wheelchair, has a braking system that detects when users are traveling downhill to manage their descent. At under 10 pounds, it's lightweight and has power assist features designed to minimize muscle strain on the user. The plan is to build it with ports so that third-party companies can develop additional sensors and components, Florence said. The price, of course, is not a pretty one, but I'm sure that once people uh, begin to request it or to purchase it, uh, hopefully it'll come down. But right now, uh, price is expected to start around $7,000. So, you know, that's the difficult part. You know, when something is very new, it starts out a little expensive. But um, that's the way it, it, it goes, you know, for any new product. It starts at a, at a <laughs> price there. You know, they got to start somewhere. So I think that once, um, as, a, as a community, as a society, once we start purchasing it and they get more revenue, um, then they can bring, uh, bring the price down. And, of course, they'll make adjustments and and things that will bring the price down as well. So I wish uh, National Seating and Mobility all the luck, and uh, Lucy and anyone else who is uh, involved in this project. Uh, the manual wheelchair looks very cool. Um, yeah, I would have to ride in one to see uh, what it's like. I don't know if the wheels come off. I don't know what the the different uh, aspects of this wheelchair will be for you and for me. So uh, this is the update for a new company, a new startup, a new project that's going to happen in collaboration with two big companies. So I wish them both luck. And that is it for Tech Friday. Thank you so much for spending some time with us. You could be anywhere else, but you chose to stick with us so and be with us on this uh, Tech Friday. And um, what I would uh, like to let you know is that subscriptions and likes always help the creator on YouTube. So if you would be so kind and you feel like you would like to subscribe to continue to get news and updates and information and resources uh, from this channel, feel free to subscribe and to like and make any comments. But the subscriptions and likes help us a lot. 
So um, thank you for being with us and for supporting Power Wheelchairs for success. Lisa out.